Thank you again, Darren, and thank you, Perkin Elmer, for, for inviting me. Um, this, this last few months has been uh, quite an interesting ride. Uh, as Darren spoke of, the video that I released on YouTube I actually released in November, and I'll show it to you here in just a minute. But uh, before, what I want to talk to you about really today is what my life has been like living with PKU. And what's important for me to note is before I made this video in November, I was relatively isolated from the rest of the PKU community. Um, growing up, I'm from Louisiana, and in Louisiana we have about, I think, 300, maybe 350 uh, patients that visit the uh, metabolic programs, at least I know in the state of Louisiana, and not all of those are PKU. Most of them are, I believe, but not all of them are. And in my city, Shreveport, which is in the north, uh, northwestern corner of the state, there's maybe one other patient that I know of. I've never actually met her. Um, so growing up, I never had an opportunity to interact with other patients. Um, my experience in dealing with anyone with PKU was actually just my clinic, my you know, physician down at Tulane Medical Center, my dietitians. They were my only contact you know, with the PKU community. And, uh, but the reason why I decided to step out and make this video is simply because in Louisiana, um, there's a formula, of course, that I have to drink. It's my protein source, my main source of protein. And the, fortunately, Louisiana has always provided that free to PKU patients. And I did not realize that was uncommon, at least in the United States, for states to do that. Many other states, patients have quite, you know, quite some difficulty getting either the state to provide it for them or getting even insurance coverage for it. And you know, the, the formula is very, very expensive. And so um, for a long time, I've thought, you know, maybe I should do some sort of a video. My background is in broadcasting. Um, I'm actually quite more um, comfortable telling other people's stories, so telling my own story was something new for me. You know, I'm, I'm used to sitting down and interviewing people and, you know, sharing their story with everybody, but for me to actually sit down and talk about myself or talk about my PKU story was quite a new experience. And it's something I'd thought about for, um, for a long time, but just have not done until a few months ago. And uh, part of the reason why, as I'll, you'll see in the video, that I finally decided to make this video is because I was on YouTube last year and I saw a video that somebody else had done a couple years ago and they showed some undiagnosed PKU patients. And that's something that I have heard, of course, my entire life growing up with PKU, what my life could have been like. But there's, you know, it's, a, it's something different whenever you hear that and you don't really see it, you know, to think, okay, this is what my life could have been like. I could have been institutionalized. I could have become mentally handicapped. But to actually see it with my own eyes, I mean, for me as a videographer, you know, that's what I do for a living, for me to see that means even more. And so watching that video just really, really touched me. And in the last few months, I even started trying to do some research on, you know, what life could have been like, you know, in order for me to really have a comprehension and understanding of what life could have been like so that I can appreciate the life that I have now, I felt like it was important for me to do some research to figure out, you know, what, what would have, uh, life have been like. And in that process, I, uh, I discovered that the famous author Pearl Buck had a daughter who, uh, who had PKU. Of course, she wrote the book, the, the Good Earth, and I'd actually never read the book, but I was familiar with her. And she also wrote a book um, called The Child Who Never Grew. And what I discovered is that she had a child in the 1920s, was born in the 1920s. By the time she was about three or five years old, she realized something is just definitely not right. And so she went to doctor after doctor after doctor and could not discover what is wrong with my child. By the time that she was nine years old, she was institutionalized for the rest of her life. And I read this book a few years ago. Um, she wrote this book before they had discovered PKU, before they knew what was wrong. But she wrote about what life was like in dealing with her daughter and the, you know, the challenges and frustrations of trying to raise a daughter who she couldn't even communicate with. You know, I'm not a parent but I can at least understand and appreciate on some level what it would be like to have a child that you, that you love, you care for, but you can't communicate that to them because they can't understand it. And so in reading this book, I came across a quote, and this quote has really, really made me thankful for who I am and for the life that I've been given. Um, her sister, in writing this afterward of the book, talks about what her, her sister's life was like. She said she never learned to read or write, but she did learn to color, write her name, and verbalize her needs. She also learned to sew simple projects and to master many self-care skills that enhanced her independence. She learned to bathe and dress herself with some supervision, to tie her shoelaces, to be independent in toileting and tooth care, and to comb or brush her hair with verbal reminders. She also became skilled at using a fork and spoon 
after she gave up chopsticks, which she preferred for about the first 10 years she was at school. And when I read that and I think, what, what is the difference between her and me? And the only difference is when we were born. She was born at a time when PKU was not discovered, when newborn screening programs did not exist. Flash forward 60 years later, I was born in 1980, at a time when PKU had already been discovered, newborn screening had been around for a while, and you know, advancements in understanding the diet, the PKU diet, and the low protein diet that I have to have, and the availability of low pro, you know, the uh, formulas that I have to drink, all that existed by the time I was born. Even in the time you know, that I've been alive, there's been a lot more you know, exploration and understanding of PKU and research and new concepts and uh, even some new medicines out there. But to think for me that the only difference between myself and Carol Buck was the fact of when we were born, you know, made me very, very thankful and very grateful for my life. And like I said, having grown up and been used to you know, my life to suddenly take a step back and examine somebody else's life who has the same thing that I have but had a very, very different life, it definitely gave me cause to be grateful. So back in November, I decided to make this video. I'd, I had done a little bit of research, I'd seen some of these videos online. The thing that finally drove me over the edge and said, I have to do this right now. This is not a choice anymore, I have to do it right now, is the formula that I've always you know, had access to in Louisiana. At one point last year was, you know, was threatened. The funding was possible gonna, possibly gonna be cut for that. And you know, that's a very expensive formula. It's very expensive. It's not something that I could afford. It's not something that insurance will cover. Um, and so I decided to make this video. And in the few months since then, it's, I released it back in November, um, life has actually been quite different because I've finally been able to connect to, uh, to other PKU patients. And I wanna go ahead and play this for you now. And then after I play that, just kinda tell you some things that have happened since I released this video back in, back in November. So as I stated before, um, back in November, when I, before I made that video, I had no access or communication with any other PKU patients. And what's been amazing to me is to see the kind of response that's happened through this video. Because to be honest with you, I never actually anticipated that it would get a lot of attention or near as much as it's received. Um, but since November, um, it just kind of, I shared it on Facebook with some of my you know, my, my friends and um, then my doctor, my PKU doctor actually shared it. And honestly, since then it's kind of gone viral and in the last six or seven months it's been, it's received about 8,500 hits in over 80 countries. And I say that and to me that's still unusual because I'm thinking, how did this happen? You know, how in this, the last six or seven months did I go from, you know, no interaction with any other PKU patients to now, besides the video getting many, many hits, one of the amazing things that's happened is um, kind of this online community, basically being able to connect with other PKU patients, you know, through Facebook or via Twitter, you know, or um, just, you know, other means across the internet, it was something I never actually anticipated. And it's something that, um, you know, even the last few months, what I've done, my, my YouTube channel right here, like I said, it's every day, the video seems now it's up to 8,700 videos, um, 8,700 hits. But uh, one of the things that I've done actually is even start a, uh, a, a Facebook page for my PKU work. And since then I've gotten about 250 to 300 followers. And you know, these are people that most of them are either PKU patients themselves, adults living with PKU, college age students. Most of them actually are uh, parents of uh, children with PKU. And the amazing thing to me is to consider that last year at this time, literally, I had no access or communication with anyone else, and now, and I'm actually being able to connect with them and provide some, you know, com words of comfort. I mean, one of the things that I'd wanted to do for years was to make a video that actually for new parents, simply because so many, you know, I hear so many stories of people telling me what their experiences was like whenever they found out that their child had PKU. Either they immediately went to a medical textbook or their doctor came back with them and the first thing that they said was, well, PKU can cause mental retardation. Yes, that's true. But that's if it's not diagnosed, if it's not treated. The whole other story had never really been effectively told by anyone. And so I always, I'd wanted to make some sort of a video that actually did that, that actually told these people, hey, this is the possibility. Yes, there are definitely gonna be challenges. Yes, these are the consequences. But at the same time, if you're diagnosed, if you're on diet, if you're on formula, then this is what your life can be like. I never actually, when I made this video, it was literally more from an activist perspective, trying to get some support for the uh, challenges we were having with getting access to formula. But the video actually has done the other thing as well. 
And, and so it's been quite amazing to, um, to you know, basically friend, I, I don't even know what the number is, it's probably up to 500 people on my personal Facebook page that are somehow associated with PKU and a couple other hundred on this page as well. But one of the things that's also happened is simply that um, I have been able to actually get more active and involved with other PKU companies, with our other organizations. Um, I'd, when I made the video, actually, I originally um, had been in communication with the National PKU Alliance. They were the only PKU organization that I was aware of, and um, they were actually the ones that were heavily out there promoting, you know, trying to get some uh, you know, legislation passed in Washington to help out PKU patients with their formula because there's so many different standards that, you know, no matter what state you live in, there's different standards regarding formula. As I stated before, for me, having access to my formula in Louisiana was something I'd always had and I'd never, I'd always taken it for granted. I didn't realize in some other states that if they provide it at all, sometimes they'll stop it before age five because the brain is fully developed by the time you're five. Or it's, you know, in other situations, it's when you become an adult, they stop access to it as an adult. In many other situations, somebody's trying to get access to it through their private insurance, which they have constant challenges with that as well. And so I look at that and I see there's so many different, you know, standards that exist and, you know, organizations like NPKUA and others are trying to get some sort of legislation passed to standardize, you know, the, the diet process and the formula process. Because the way we look at it is, the, the, the amazing thing is that, you know, um, I remember seeing a, a question on um, Perkin Elmer's Twitter feed a couple months ago that said, in the last 75 years, what do you believe has been the most, you know, you, you, the, your favorite scientific advance? What do you think has benefited you the most? Of course, I saw that and immediately thought, well, hello, the PKU diagnosis and, you know, you know diet and formula and everything related to PKU because without that, where would I be? But at the same time, I look at that and see now that, you know, we have so many challenges with, um, you know, with diet and formula. Because, you know, I, I'd always taken something else for granted is that I've always had a little bit higher tolerance than many other PKU patients. And I actually didn't realize that I did. And for most people that don't have any knowledge of PKU, when I say, yeah, I had a higher tolerance, it was 20 grams of protein a day, they're like, what? <laughs> you know, and I was like, yeah, I can't eat steak, I can't eat chicken, I can't eat all these things. But now look at some of these other patients that are out there and their, their allowance is about four or five grams of protein a day. I mean, I have PKU and I look at that and I think, good Lord, how do you do that? You know, how can you, you know, you, you, you take a bag of Doritos or you take a Snickers bar and that's enough protein that they can have in a day. You know, and, and if I wanted to, I could eat one of those and, you know, and be okay. You know, and it's, it, that's amazing to me. But you see the, you know, so because of that, so many different um, PKU patients with so many different levels of, of diet and what they can handle as far as protein. Um, in my situation, I never had to get access to low protein foods. You know, they have specially created low protein breads, low protein pastas, other things like that for these people who can't eat regular bread, regular pasta, something I've taken for granted. And then um, the formula itself, you know, everybody, if you have PKU, you need access to that period. And the fact that there's no standardization of those two things, but there is regarding newborn screening has, I mean, that has been amazing. But the, you know, if it would be very easy for us to take, you know, take for granted what newborn screening has done for us. But the other way that we look at it is, okay, we've done a great job with mandating and legislating, hey, Newborn screening for all of these diseases, newborn screening for PKU. But the way that it currently exists, it's almost as if you know, the um, governments or other organizations are basically saying, okay, we're going to help you with newborn screening, but if your child ends up with one of these diseases, well, then you're on your own. And as I stated in my video, I believe the numbers that we calculated um, with uh, regards to formula, if, if people lost access to their formula, it would cost a certain amount per year, I think it was like $140 million a year for everyone in the United States to get access to their formula. But if you flip that over and you look at the cost to institutionalize everyone PKU, it was about one to two billion dollars. And you know, you look at something like that and you, and you honestly have to think, there just must not be a lot, enough education out there. Because you can't honestly think that any, you know, people who, who are, you know, have access to that information can look at that and think, oh, it's just not worth it. You know, it, you know, you may look at that and you think, well, it's only 20,000 or it's only 50,000 people. Well, for those people who have it, it's very important, obviously. You know, for somebody like me, had I not had, number one, you know, had my diagnosis not been caught through newborn screening, well, hey, 
you know, the rest of my life with having diet and formula, that wouldn't have mattered because I wouldn't have, you know, I would have absolutely ended up in an institution. You know, but even with that, you know, same thing, without having access to my diet and without having access to my formula, by having parents who took care of me who listened to the doctors and didn't just discount what they were saying, you know, parents who listened to them and said, we're going to do everything we can to make sure my child is okay. You know, and even though that, you know, in the last, you know, 30 years since I've been born, the understanding has evolved. You know, over the years, they um, told me even when I was growing up that there was a possibility by the time I was an adult that I could possibly go off diet. Um, or at least liberalize it enough to make it seem like I was off diet. Uh, but as I grew up and uh, they started telling me that, you know, that, that probably isn't a good idea. You know, there was a period of time when I was in high school that I actually, I wasn't off diet, but I definitely was a little bit more relaxed than I sh probably should have been. And that's because I was told by the time I was an adult I could go off diet. So I don't have one of those stories like some other PKU adults, maybe a little bit older than me, that were taken off diet at a young age. Fortunately, I don't have one of those stories. You know, some of them were taken off at five years of age. And because of that, they were off diet for 25 years. And now if you talk to them, you know, they, they may seem perfectly healthy after the first few minutes, but you can tell after a while that maybe they have some, they have some side effects. They've had some damage after being off diet for such a long time. Even though they're back on diet now, and even though they're doing relatively okay now, they've experienced some of those side effects. And that's just because they were taken off diet at such a young age. For me, thankfully, like I said, I didn't have one of those stories. But when I was in high school, I did relax just a little bit and started eating, not necessarily foods that I shouldn't have eaten, eaten but maybe foods that, you know, more of the food that I could eat, more bread or more pasta than I should have. Because of that, my grades definitely suffered and I had a hard time concentrating, I had a hard time staying focused, and I was pretty much a C average student all the way through high school and college. And I finished college and then, you know, had to, you know, go in the real world and get a job. And um, I was actually in school for broadcasting for video production. And um, my wife and I, you know, actually got married at a young age. We're married at 20. And that was the time I, I realized, you know what, got to get a job now. So I was able and fortunate enough to get a job working in, uh, you know, the local television business in our uh, local news stations. And, you know, doing that and living with the PKU lifestyle, at the time, I didn't even necessarily probably think about it, but it was definitely difficult because, you know, it's such a busy, you know, hectic, very, very busy um, lifestyle of, you know, working. I was working on, at least on the weekends, I was working 13 hour days. And at the time I was not on formula. So, and I was eating pretty relaxed. So when I would come home there, you know, I don't know what the proper word for it is, but I, if I could say that I came home tired, there is no word for that level of tired because I wasn't doing well on my diet. I wasn't on my formula like I should have been. And so for a couple of years after that, while I was working in the TV business, I mean, that was my normal routine. I was, you know, working, you know, hectic shifts, crazy hours. I was, you know, whether it was working the early morning show, working from about 3 a.m. to noon, or whether it was working on the weekends or working 13 hour days on the weekends or whatever it was, being on call in the middle of the night and, you know, getting your phone call and having to go up and rush out and, and not being prepared for some of those situations where, you know, I get called out in the middle of the night and I'm not home for a day or two because I had to go cover a news story. And at the time, because I wasn't on diet and formula, I didn't necessarily have my formula ready to go with me. I didn't, you know, consciously think ahead of time all the time to make sure that I had access to the food that I actually needed. I actually remember covering uh, one hurricane down in South Louisiana and I was in the middle of taking a test in my Spanish class and I, um, I got the page and I'm like, oh boy, I've got to go. And so I ended up trying to finish the test and flunk the test because I was so concerned about, you know, having to go to work. And in the rush, I didn't take any cash. And because of that, I got down to South Louisiana when a hurricane had just hit and there's no power anywhere. I didn't have any cash. I only had a credit card and I didn't eat for about a day or two. And for anyone that, you know, feeling hungry is not a pleasant experience when you're really hungry, but feeling hungry whenever you have PKU and you really, you have to have food. I mean, you have to do that in order for your blood levels to be okay. It wasn't a pleasant experience and definitely not something I'm going to repeat again. Um, but all that to say that, you know, working such a busy, hectic lifestyle without being on diet and formula definitely took its toll. And back, I, th I think I was probably 24, 25, a um, few years ago, I actually uh, went back to my clinic, got back in touch with them because I've been out of touch for a few years. And since then, I've been doing much better. Um, so even though I didn't ever really go off diet like many other people did, I definitely had my experience where I didn't really manage my PKU like I should have. 
And I've you know, since you know, gotten back in touch with my clinic and they've gotten me back on formula and I'm back on my diet and I'm, I'm actually doing quite well now. In fact, there's, a, um, there's been a newer drug developed in the last few years called Kuvan, which for some PKU patients, they seem to respond well, others don't. It just depends. In my particular case, I actually have quite res responded quite well, and um, I've been on it for about a year now. And, you know, it's done two things for me which have been absolutely amazing. Number one is it actually has helped my diet. It has is, it is, um, basically boosted my ability to process protein, and um, because of that, I've probably at least doubled the amount of protein that I can handle, which they've even gotten me now on, this is quite a new experience for me, but I'm eating cheese and I'm eating eggs. And for somebody like me, you know, you get used to eating what you've eaten your entire life and you suddenly introduce something new that you've never, I mean, I tried to cook an egg a couple weeks ago and I realized I've never cooked an egg. This is quite interesting. You know, I was like, what is this? How, and I tried to eat it and I'm like, this is not like anything I've eaten. I'm not sure if I really like this, you know? It was, I mean, it's a new experience just eating an egg, you know? And to most people it seems, you know, it seems quite silly, but the truth is, I mean, you think about some of these little things that you can take for granted and something that, you know, I never even consciously considered until I tried to cook an egg, you know. But in the last year, I mean, I've actually been able to open up my diet and liberalize it a little bit more and eat some nuts and eat some cheese and eat some eggs. And, you know, um, but the other thing that it's done for me, which has been just as helpful, is um, I've, I've kind of noticed a trend in uh, meeting and talking with other PKU patients online is uh, that some PKU patients actually struggle with being overweight and some PKU patients actually struggle with being underweight. I've always been one of those types that struggled for years with being underweight. I'm about 5'11", and for about 15 years, I was probably around 130. I mean, I was just not healthy in, as far as my weight goes at all. And, and being on this drug, uh, being on Kuvan, it's really helped my ability to process protein so I can actually build a little bit extra muscle. And now I'm at 170. I've gained 40 pounds in the last year which for me has been absolutely wonderful because there's, you know, it, I think it even helps contribute to the fact, you know what, I have energy now. You know, I tried to work out, do some um, exercising with my wife last year, and to be honest with you, I really couldn't do it because I just, the diet, I couldn't do it. You know, I wasn't processing enough protein, I wasn't eating enough calories, and I was, I was incredibly underweight. So, so on one hand, you know, a lot has happened in the last year that have definitely helped out my own, you know, experience with having PKU. But the, the thing that's been absolutely amazing to me, though, since releasing this video is to see how much it's actually meant to other PKU patients out there. You know, uh, as I stated before, I, uh, when I originally produced the video, I was, uh, you know, working with National PKU Alliance and even mentioned them at the end of the video. But what's happened since then is I've been able to actually meet and um, interact with other PKU companies, other organizations out there. Um, even one, uh, there's Cambrook Foods, which is a, um, a manufacturer of low protein foods and formulas. And uh, they actually invited me to come to a newborn screening, I mean, uh, excuse me, a, um, a focus group uh, up in Boston a couple months ago. And to be honest with you, it was, even that was such a new experience because it was the first time I ever actually had an opportunity to sit down and actually meet anyone with PKU face to face, you know, with so many gathered at one time. You know, they had a focus group where they brought a bunch of uh, kids in and they were testing out these formulas. And then they also had a couple of adults there. And throughout the entire week we were there, I actually got to meet a couple of other adults with PKU and never, I guess, never consciously realized how important that is, how important it is to have that level of patient support. You know, as important as it is for all of us to be in, in communication with our clinics, I've learned that it's equally as important to have contact with other people that have the condition simply because there's a certain level of um, experience there. You know, it's one thing and it's, I mean, we, where, would we, we, where would we be without our doctors, obviously? You know, where would we be without people who have, um, in the PK community that, you know, our doctors, our, you know, dietitians, but at the same time, there's a certain level of experience that only someone with PKU can have. You know, only somebody else with PKU knows exactly what it feels like when your levels get way high and suddenly you can't think straight, you've lost all your energy. I mean, there have been times when my levels were high, my wife would come in, you know, the room and I'm out, you know, passed out on the floor, kind of, you know, kind of zoned out. And the only way that I can describe it is like if you've had surgery and you're taking some sort of heavy medication that has just completely wiped you out and you just literally cannot move. And that's basically what it's felt like. And, and being able to talk to somebody who's been in that exact same situation definitely helps. But 
at the same time, it's you know being able for me to communicate with people like that has been amazing. But what's what's been unbelievable to me is to see how people have responded to the video and, and telling me how much that video has meant to them. And it's not even something that I honestly had um, a realization of what happened when I made the video. But um, as on the screen right now, I created this Facebook page, like I mentioned earlier, and every day I seem to be connecting with more and more people who leave me comments and, and basically saying thank you. You know, thank you for making this video and because it's something that apparently people had wanted to see for a long time. Nobody had actually put, in, put into words quite the same way. Um, the other thing that's happened is I've actually gotten involved with this uh, nonprofit organization called Metabolic Disease Foundation. It's a new uh, startup nonprofit that, um, you know, basically it, it does uh, tailor to people with a wide range of metabolic diseases. However, we're focusing on PKU first simply because everybody that's on the board is an adult living with PKU. And uh, it's, it's, it's new in the last year, and they, um, I was honored that they asked me to be the uh, chairman of the board. And so we, we've just been, in the last few months, really kind of getting started. We're helping people get access to low-protein foods or formula. And uh, at the same time, I'm also writing a, a weekly blog on living with PKU, but not just not just living with PKU the way that most people talk about it. You know, most people seem, especially with PKU, seem to be very um, interested in finding information about diet and recipe and things like that. And I realize that's just not something that I'm necessarily qualified to do because I'm just not a recipe person. However, writing just about life from a PKU perspective seems to mean a lot to people because there's there's so many aspects to to life with PKU besides just your rest you know your diet and recipe whether it's you know talking about you know some of the psychological factors that come along with it some of the emotional challenges that come along with it that seems to be something people seem to relate to as well but um, so in the last few years I mean I've gone from literally no communication with anyone with PKU and making this video and it's just honestly it's been an experience that I'd never never really anticipated I mean even from a professional level um, which all of the the recognition that the video has received has been absolutely amazing but even from a professional level um, I actually uh, somehow again via Twitter I believe uh, Sony uh, broadcast professional Facebook or Twitter page actually somehow found out about my video I think I tweeted about my uh, camera that I'm that I use for the video it's a Sony camera and they said hey we'd like to see some of your work and I'm like well okay so I shared you know a video with them this video which I used their camera for and they're like hey we like the video we want to share it on our Facebook page I'm like you go ahead <laughs> you know <laughs> that's perfectly fine with me and you know even from a professional level to have Sony to watch the video and know that it meant something to them I mean you know, because it had become normal to me, I never anticipated that it would that it would receive any sort of attention. And and from a professional level, to have Sony watch it and say, "Hey, that's amazing," that has been uh, that's meant so much to me. But um, basically, that's what's happened in the last few months. And briefly, I'd like to tell you about basically what's happening now. What what am I doing now? Um, you know, as I said, I'm becoming more involved in the PKU community and becoming more involved in trying to, you know, be an activist for whether it's, um, you know, getting access to formula, which fortunately I made the video simply because I was trying to get support and recognition for what's happening in Louisiana and across the country. Uh, a few months later after the video was released, I did find out that Louisiana is not cutting, you know, access to the funding. So at least in Louisiana, we're okay for right now. But at the same time, I look at that and I think, well, that's great. Louisiana has formula. I'm okay, but what about everybody else? You know, what about all these people in the United States who, on a constant basis, struggle with their insurance companies getting access to what they need to survive? And, you know, people saying, well, it's not medically necessary. Medically necessary for who? For me, it is. You know, for me, it definitely is. For me, it, it, you know, it, it is what helps me. It's what keeps me focus it's what's keep it's what keeps me healthy but at the same time you know besides just activating for you know being an activist for you know PQ concerns like that um, the biggest thing that this has really motivated me to do is it's actually you know, re-inspired a, a dream that I've had for many years, which is to make a feature-length documentary on PKU. It's actually why I'm, recording the, uh, I'm actually recording my, my speech today, because I want to share it in my, in my video. And actually, my, peop my friends on Facebook wanted to see my speech today, and I'm like, well, I'll put it up on YouTube. But, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm starting now, I'm in the early, early stages of working on a documentary, a feature length documentary on PKU. And I realize my hope is because, to my knowledge, nothing like that's been done before. And, and I don't mean like, you know, sharing the history of PKU or some other information, because there's so many great resources out there. There's so many great pieces of inf information out there on PKU that people can get access to. But what I really want to do is to show the world this is what this is, and this is what it's like to live with this, and this is why we say we absolutely need access to this. So. I can't control the fact that I have PKU. I, I think I even mentioned that in my video. It's not something that you know, I planned. It's not something, I mean, this is something that happened when I was born. I can't control the fact that I had this. However, what I am learning is that I can control what I do with it. And the fact that, you know, I say, I use that word control very, very specifically, very, very intentionally. Because, you know, being, working in the news business, um, working as a television news videographer, you know, you, I saw a lot of stuff that I'm never going to forget. I mentioned in my video covering Hurricane Katrina. That's definitely something I'm never going to forget. You know, being in an experience like that, you know, not necessarily being somebody that's, you know, a, a fireman that's going down to rescue somebody or a, a state trooper that's down there in the SWAT team that's, you know, that's basically, they were having gun battles in the middle of the streets in the early days of Katrina and somebody who's actually down there to do something. But to do what I did, which was to show up and to watch and to record it, there's a certain level of feeling out of control. Like this, it's a, you know, you're standing in the middle of a deserted American city it feels like something out of a crazy science fiction movie. It really did. And, you know, and being in something like that, and, and that thought came to mind of, you know, this is just, this is so out of control. This is chaotic. And I use that word control because then I step back and look at my, my PKU life, and I think, you know what? The fact that I have this is not something I can control. Now, today, can I control the fact that I'm on diet and formula? Yes. I can control, I can control what I eat. And to a certain level, I can control my formula so long as I get access to it. I'm not necessarily in control of getting access to it, but if I do have it, I have to make the choice of am I going to drink this or am I not going to drink this. But when I take a step back and ask the question about my diagnosis, I have no control over that. Absolutely no control. But when I, and when I made this video, again, I was consciously thinking about you know, formula and diet. But the one thing, especially after Darren contacted me, I started thinking, no, wait a second. The one thing that I'd never really consciously considered is where would I be without newborn screening? Because you take diet and you take formula out of the equation. I mean, that stuff, if I had not been diagnosed through newborn screening programs, there is no question where I would be. You know, I asked that question without newborn screening, where would we be? I asked that for my PKU people. And of course, obviously that's a rhetorical question because everybody knows exactly where we'd be. I would have ended up just like Pearl Buck's daughter. I would have ended up in an institution. I definitely wouldn't have had a life like I've had. You know? And sometimes it's, 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 it's kind of surreal to me for me to step back and think that you know, your life just becomes a normal experience for you. But when I step back and write my journal and think about all the experiences that I have had, working in the television business and seeing so many interesting things and traveling to Russia, traveling to Ireland, now traveling to Finland, I mean, it's not something that, you know, that I would have ever anticipated doing 20 years ago. I just never would have thought of any of this. And when I think about all of that, and I think all of those experiences, everything that I love to do in life, whether it's making videos, or whether it's playing you know, music, or whether it's reading or writing, or going to school and finishing all my degrees, none of that, I mean, absolutely none of that would have been possible had it not been for newborn screening programs. So, I mean, I guess my closing remarks, what I would like to say on behalf of all the 50,000 people in the world who have PKU, and I know that we're all in agreement on this, is thank you for what you do. You know, I know on a different level what it can be like as far as working a job and, you know, having difficult hours and asking the question, is it really worth this? You know, I can still ask that question about a lot of jobs that I have. It's like, man, is this really worth this? But I'd just like to say to you, thank you for what you do. And the truth is, when you have that question, is this worth this? You know, is it worth being away from your children? The answer is yes. You know, I am an example of why it is worth it. And I'd like to say thank you because, honestly, none of the experiences that I have in my life would have been possible had it not been for newborn screening programs. And again, I'd just like to say thank you to Perkin Elmer because this has been quite the experience. It's nothing that I would have imagined six or seven months ago, the opportunity to come here and speak before you, but it's been an amazing, amazing adventure. Thank you very much.
Thanks, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, <clears throat> Kevin, that was great. Thank you very, very much. I'd like to quickly introduce Kevin's wife, Mara. Mara, you mind standing up? Thank you. That's Kevin's wife. Thank you. So Kevin and Mara got here yesterday, mm -hmm. right? So That's this correct. is their second day in Finland. They've traveled all throughout the world, and they let mm -hmm. me know this morning, Finland is their favorite country. Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent for that. Um, if there are any questions for Kevin, uh, he'd be happy to, to take a few. Yeah, sure. I'm coming up from, uh, from the University of Japan. I'm a pediatrician taking care of just a few of the PKU organizations. Yes. Uh, Right. And it's difficult to uh, explain the difference to the uh, people. Yes, um, you know, that's been the amazing thing about being on Facebook specifically is that. Um, as I stated, being able for patients to be able to interact with each other has been amazing. However, the one thing I do tell everybody who contacts me, I do, I do get questions sometimes about diet or formula and their specific case. And I try to answer if I can, but the truth is I always refer back to um, their clinic and their dietitian. So, um, I mean, I could actually, one thing I like to do is give you one of my cards today because it has all of my information if you'd like to connect, but I can also, if you guys would like to do something like that there, I can show you kind of how you can do that. The, um, the amazing thing though is, I think it's very important to, to be clear on with them is as important as it is for PKU people to come together and to talk, it's equally as important for them to stay in touch with their doctors and to be very, very specific in obeying their doctor's orders and not necessarily take quite as much advice from each other. I think um, it's so long as it's very, very basic general information. You know, most PKU people understand, for instance, that you can't chew gum with aspartame or drink diet drinks. That's, that seems to be across the board, people understand that. However, I can't actually tell people exactly what they should eat simply because even without my you know, new medication Kuvan, my, my um, tolerance is actually quite higher than most other people. So I think that having a community like that is very important from a social perspective of being able to communicate with somebody who understands so long as they at the same time you know, listen to their doctors. Yeah. Yes. Harry Hanson, retired from CDC. Uh, during your uh, lifetime with PKU, do you ever remember any home monitoring for dietary adherence? No, sir. Unfortunately. No sex, no blood spot, blood spot, blood spot, blood spot. Well, we, growing up, I know that we always actually went to. Um, we would go to our local health clinic to, to actually do my blood work when I was growing up and uh, we would send it off to Tulane and that's actually how we would do it. Of course the process was still lengthy because of course we had to send it down there and they actually had to process it but as far as doing the the blood prick, no we didn't do that at home however in the last few years I actually have started doing that. So it's still at a point to where I actually have to you know do the blood work at home, send it off to Tulane and let them run the test. Um, I do know that they've been working on um, trying to do some sort of home monitoring, um, but in the last couple of months, I believe they announced that they just it wasn't quite as accurate as they'd like it to be, so nothing's been finalized with it yet. So the second comment is, do you happen to know John Adams from Canada? Actually, I, I'm familiar with the name. I don't believe that I've actually spoken with him on Facebook, but I have he seen him. He has a son with PKU. He's also developed a history. Okay. PKU and interactions. You might want to contact John and interact with him. I will. Oh, I definitely will. I actually, I'll, I'll give you the contact thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with him because one of my other friends uh, with PKU is in Canada, and I think she's posted some of his comments on her Facebook page. So I'll definitely, I'd love to, co to connect with him. Yes. Um, so what is the pricing formula? Uh, how much do you need? 
The average is a, I think they said the average is about $7,100 a year, I believe, but that also depends on the particular case. I mean, if you're a child, you require less formula. As an adult like me, you require more. Um, the specific formula I've been on for quite a few years now comes in a packet form and I drink about six packets a day. So it can range anywhere from a few hundred dollars to a month to maybe a thousand or so a month. And for somebody like me, I mean, that's, that's expensive no matter which way you look at it. But um, especially d depending on what your level of income is, I mean, obviously for some people that may be doable, for others it's not at all, you know. And that's also the, the challenge, like I said before, that the significant challenge people seem to face is getting any sort of insurance coverage whatsoever for it. So some, some insurance companies um, or some programs actually, um, some states have, have mandated that insurance companies actually a lot at least a couple hundred dollars a month or something for medic you know medical foods and medical needs and honestly even in some of those cases sometimes they just they still will kind of fight it oh, one other thing to illustrate though and this is a separate a separate cost um, is regarding the uh, the formula is one cost now however the new drug that's come out Kuvan, which has been incredible um, it's been it's produced by the company Biomarin and they've been absolutely incredible and have stated that if anybody needs access to this do not worry about the finances we will figure it out and so far as I know no one who is on the drug has had a problem getting any sort of coverage but to illustrate what the cost is it's thirteen thousand dollars a month I drink I have to take 12 pills a day in my particular case and that for me it's about thirteen thousand dollars a month Fortunately, and this goes back again to the, the um, lack of standards, but fortunately um, our insurance company will provide half of that cost and the other half is, is actually taken up by Nord. Um, but um, again, half of that cost is being paid for by our insurance company, but formula is not. You know, there's just a couple of there's different standards that definitely need to be worked out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, Kevin, thanks Thank again. you. Thank, Thank you. you.